Right, a day later and it feels like an age. And uh, I had the typical issue where the Royal Mail decided to deliver it to the wrong house. So I had to go on a, a lovely walk down the road. But anyway, it is finally here. And if you uh, have any guess at where I might have bought this, um, yeah, that drumstick might just give it away. Um, and if you haven't guessed already, it's these really nice guys. They are proper specialists. They're Rover Central and ZT specialists, which is why they stock a lot of parts of them. But they are specialists when it comes to every other Rover. They certainly know their stuff. And I had every confidence in buying this from them. Uh, so I get to suck on this as well. Um, when I work, which is always nice. They gave me some Malmo's to suck on when I bought the uh, head gasket set off them. Uh, thank you to, uh, I believe it's Matt and Max. Um, I made a slight mistake when ordering my cap. Um, I actually ordered one off an, a ZS 180 and I told them about the mistake and they corrected it. Um, so this cap is the correct one to uh, basically sync to my original. I will uh, check if there's any number here and it matches to that, but because I suspect it's an aftermarket one, I don't necessarily think the numbers may actually line up. But um, still, uh, let's cut this open. Wow. I think we can honestly say that um, yeah, that is um, quite a marked difference. There is um, some aging to this plastic as well because I gather it's been in storage a long time. Um, this is genuine your old stock as far as I'm aware and it, it's got a metal insert there. You can actually see how it's constructed. Uh, so there's a metal insert there and there's a metal insert there. Um, and also, I believe that that is something to do with the actual... Um, level sense or the float as such because I can hear something rattling I'm assuming that's what it is right now I cannot hear that on the old one because if I get the old one oh just about if I really I have to really shake this to get that noise but this one free as a bird that's um that's not a good thing and that's may, may have been what's been causing um, my low level cooling sensor to actually be triggered at random times because it's gummed up with oil. Um, and this cap looks exactly original. So we have PA66GF30. And forget the old one. No, you're not invited. PA 66 GF 30 that can go in my spares there is a slight bit of dirt around there for some reason and you've got that as well it is really good um, practice to change the cap look the bottle the, the amount of pressure that these things hold I mean we're talking about 15 psi of pressure that's quite a lot of pressure when you've got working temperature and these caps have to hold that they're designed to vent slightly, but hold most of the pressure down. Um, but if they're venting too much, then it's not holding the pressure. And that's when you can get overspilling of coolant because naturally there is a pressure uh, issue. And old caps are very, very um, capable of basically causing those symptoms. In fact, a lot of Rover 45 owners and Rover owners down the years have actually diagnosed uh, incorrectly a head gasket issue when it's actually the cap at fault um, so it's best practice since I'm doing this and I'm doing it properly and to be honest with you apart from the fact that the some of the ho well apart from this one they're all the original hoses which I'm very happy with um, but apart from that everything in the cooling system should be top tip now um, I sure expect the least amount of failures from the cooling system, the head gasket, everything. And you've, you've got to do it properly. You've got to do it right first time. And ideally, I should have done this way before. If I had spotted those cracks when I was doing the head gasket, that would have been a cost I'd have had to have stomached immediately because quite frankly, I've, no, I've never liked driving on that and I'm pleased I'm not. Anyway, let's uh, fit the new tank. Now, one thing we've got to do is beforehand, don't make the mistake like me, always fit the level sensor. So just pop it in and give it a push. Make sure it just sits in this, this little cutout notch here. So just push it in and there we go. That's it, done. 
Now we've got the electrical connector to put on. So it's sort of bent at an angle. Lovely, jobby, job done -y. Okay, just angle that out of the way. Now we've got the hose. And just put that hose straight on. And it sips on rather nicely. So it's gotta tighten this up. Just do this just sensibly, just make sure the hose clamp is in place. Um, somebody asked me the other day, Jubilee hose clamps or self, um, those, these, these sort of spring clamps, automatic uh, spring clamps. Well, Jubilee clips are easy to apply with a screwdriver or 7mm uh, socket, but they can be subject to abuse like over tightening, under tightening. Um, cheap ones tend to cross thread and then cause massive leaks, whereas the spring clamps, they are a faff to get on and off but they are designed in a way that they can apply enough pressure to not create any leaks, but not enough pressure to cause damage to the hose or over crimping and basically crushing of the rubber itself over time. Um, and that's basically as much as, as, much as that is, um, that's the only reason that I would use uh, spring clamps over Jubilees. The, the fact that they they can't be abused, they can't over tighten or under tighten. The only thing I would say about spring clamps is that they do rust. Um, I mean, these can rust just as badly, you need to get stainless steel ones. Um, my argument is with Jubilee clips, um, either go OEM with Jubilee clips if the manufacturer fitted them like Rover did with these, these are genuine ones, or genuine Jubilee clips. They have to, just cheap generic jubilee clips that you buy on the internet are just not good enough right so i'm just gonna angle this in we could just put this in now you need to make sure that the wiring is not strained in in any way because uh, that can be a problem so um just make sure that that is not uh hanging around like that see that shouldn't actually be like that so I'll just put that over there now we can put it in good there we go it's not fighting me no more just if you're putting anything into place and it's fighting you there's a bit of a problem um so don't force anything because that's when things get broken back to this one uh, do you know the one thing i saw at the pride of lumbridge is how many people have changed their header tanks and i knew i had to change this it's just there was, it was not up for discussion Even though this badge has been damaged, I, I tell you, that's a really bad design, how the, that sticker just, they curl up immediately. In fact, I've never seen a Rover without a curled up sticker. Look how good that looks. Now that now looks in keeping with the rest of the interior. I'm really happy. The only thing that I'm really not happy about that I can't really do much about because unfortunately, it happens to every single one of them that get touched as the plastic ages and goes brittle, is the automatic CVT dipstick. This section around here literally shattered on the first day. Because the first day where I started taking everything apart with the, from that, that horrible um, crappy battery that was fitted, um, yeah, that basically detonated on me. And it was something that was gonna go because quite frankly, the plastic is awful. A lot of people have fitted some uh, aftermarket ones because it's such a problem on the CVTs and it's actually a problem where the handle I've still got most of my handle but most of the handle actually disappears apart from that I'm really happy uh, this heat shield um, is slightly cracked at the bottom where uh, it goes through the bottom bolt but it's still it's not rattling so you know it's it's absolutely fine as it is but I might want to replace that with a new old stock one while you can get them because I believe that they're they're kind of one of those items when it's gone it's gone like these um i don't know if there is an aftermarket manufacturer of these i just think there's just genuine ones knocking around and for mark ii it's even more difficult because you've got the hole where the sensor goes anyway let's uh fill the system very gently now some people would have not actually stuck this coolant bottle down and actually held it up while filling up because you're holding it above the engine the truth is with this um expansion tank this is the engine that's the coolant expansion tank. The reason that 
expansion tanks sit, sit by design much higher is so that air can bleed out the system when you're doing a coolant change manufacturers know this some cars are rubbish for this and actually the expansion tank can be lower than the top of the engine on some models which is a big problem and those cars you do need um i've got a coolant uh, bleeder that you use an air compressor with you use those kits um, if you are in that situation I've never used my kit and I don't need to the focus mark one bleeds itself really nicely and Rover 45s you do have to do it a bit more thoroughly but the way I did it before was by releasing that and you're releasing trapped air every so often and I didn't have an issue I've never had um, air bubble issues with this car the first time I did it because I did it properly uh, but I would recommend that you fill it gently now obviously we can't fill the whole system until that thermostat opens on the first startup and then the level drops then we continue adding coolant but anyway let's fill it up but more importantly I'm having my drumstick mm-hmm Have a suck on this while you're working. And yes, I did clean this. I've used this for oil before, but I cleaned this thoroughly, this um, pourer. Now, that was a bit more gurgly than what I would have liked. Stop pouring, just let some of the air rise up, and that's important in this situation. Just so you're aware, this is the coolant that I use. Manel G12 Plus coolant. It's ready to mix antifreeze. I've got to be, I've got to be honest with you. I actually prefer, excuse the motorbikes. It's motorbike day today. Did you not know? Um, it always is where I live. Um, but literally, this is correct to strength. I think it goes down to minus 36, which is quite a stream for the UK. But it's really good stuff. Um, it was £11 for 5 litres and at that price you can't really argue with ready mixed obviously some people prefer to buy smaller bottles and mix them that's fine but you've got to use distilled water and to be honest with you this is convenient I don't have to do any mixing or anything like that um, this is not a very good practical demonstration of filling up carefully but we're getting there now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up all the way because we know that the level is going to really drop so just keep filling up now the system is as full as what it's getting so the level is actually increasing look how nice that fluid looks it actually looks like coolant and not a brown gungy mess right i'm going to stop right there and We've practically put two now i will tell you now we've practically put two liters into um basically what would be it wouldn't be the block it would actually be all what's happened is all the i mean that is practically filled the radiator the main hose that goes around the side and the bottle it wouldn't have filled anywhere else particularly the level is going down as i'm talking so air is finding its way out give it a few minutes to settle um, but basically there'll be no coolant inside the block because that bit is basically this part of the system is not connected to the coolant at the moment inside the block because the thermostat is stopping both sides of the coolant uh, both sides of the system I should say from basically touching each other that's essentially what it is um, but when the thermostat opens the two sides meet that level drops and then we keep topping up so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to start the car but first i've got a lolly to lick actually that could be about 10 minutes with me this is really nice Ooh, about six minutes later and um, that level has dropped it's gone all the way from there and it's dropped below the max that just tells you how much air is in this system and there's a bit there's a good way of doing this before you start the car initially take off that bleed screw down here so it's an eight mil if i can try and get my screwdriver in come on just crack it off come on there we go okay it's cracked off now 
I'd argue you must put a tissue around it because if you don't put a tissue it's going to get awfully messy oh there's a bit of air there oh boy now as you saw there that came down a lot and the best thing is about this screw is normally when you get to this point it starts to leak out but <laughs> there's nothing there's absolutely nothing the coolant level is just it's not high enough so um I screw this back in my advice is with a k series is to do this yeah <laughs> i do it thoroughly and methodically i wouldn't rush um because otherwise you could very easily get um some air trapped air so i would again fill it up really slowly well try to andrew clearly i didn't do a very good job hence why it dropped so much but again just fill it up all the way i'm actually going to run out of coolant from this bottle and see where you can actually get that i mean this is actually actually i'm pouring it in a bit too quickly now i'm kind of aware about that just oh i've run out now before i get the other bottle look it's gone back down again that is actually and i will say this because i've attached all the hoses naturally because i'm filling the system obviously you're not going to not attach your hoses um, i will say at the end of the last episode i did put um the slam panel the splash panel back on underneath and i as i say put all the hoses back on that one and that one and this one okay just for clarification here now what what has happened here and this is why using a vacuum um, system uh, while well, these vacuum kits they work in the same way as air conditioning kits they basically pull on the vacuum in the system and obviously if you've pulled a vacuum there's an empty space that you can fill with the fluid now what's happened here is a, it, the system's empty there is a vacuum inside all these lines and pipes and hoses and the radiator and what that that fluid has done is it's got to the point where it's kind of stopped and the fluid level sort of stopped up there, didn't it, just a few minutes ago. But it slowly worked its way down because of air bubbles. But then it kind of stopped again. And it didn't stop, and it basically stopped until the point where I pulled that bleed nipple. And it basically, what's happened there is all the air that was trapped around these hoses and the radiator in this side of the system, all that air has now been purged straight out there straight out and because the air went up the coolant went down and the coolant has filled that um the radiator and those hoses that vacuum that space where the vacuum was so hence why it keeps going down because you've basically replaced the air with the coolant um it, it's a bit mind-boggling when you actually understand how it works but there's a lot of science behind it which i don't understand but when it comes to cars that's as simple as i can put it in plain english right i need that bottle oh, this is where it gets tricky when you've got a full bottle and it is heavy so just be very careful there we go and it's very difficult at first not to get this gargling out the top of the bottle it is also important that if it keeps going down, please check for leaks. I mean, you, I think by this time you would have probably noticed if you got a leak. Uh, and you'd hear it fall on the floor and your floor would be wet and the driver would be soaking. So um, just check, just to be on the safe side. So keep pouring until we get to the top. And immediately the air bubbles come down and I can hear, and I've just heard the valve, that little ball bearing inside the inlet manifold. I just heard the check, that little ball bearing is like a check valve. I've just heard it shake. That's exactly what you want to see. And there was just some bubbles coming up to the surface, but all good so far, all clean. Um, now, because it's over halfway, and I suspect looking at this, this is where you've got to have a look one two three three and a half right i would suggest 
we've got up to about four liters at the moment and i suspect we're not far off um with the system at almost full capacity obviously the block will not be filled as of yet i suspect so we go back to what we did before okay now this will leak coolant now i'm just going to take the if we look at where it is carefully now oh come on oh yeah look we got air now that's it done that was enough to bring it just a little down that was enough i mean we could try it again yeah that's enough it's streaming out that's all you want until the coolant comes out when the coolant comes out it means the air has been purged that's a good level okay so tighten this back up remove that so I'll just get my spell on okay lovely okay just for argument's sake that is now tight I am going to put a tiny bit more in the cup just a tiny bit more not too much more Because we know the level's going to drop again. Okay, now the level is over the max. But because we know that it's going to drop again when we start the car and the thermostat opens, that's a good level to be at. Not too high, but not on the max. Because that's not enough. You need to be over the max because you clearly there's going to be some dropping coolant when the coolant actually goes into the channels that it can't get to because the thermostat is shut let's start the car now when i do this it is really important that during this stage you keep an eye on potentially any leaks there shouldn't be any leaks end of um, but it's always wise in the immediate startup to check all the hoses that you have disturbed so this one this one, that one, etc. So, just for argument's sake. Just let it warm up. Just let it warm up. She purrs, absolutely purring. Right, so that's the level. Now we're gonna just let it warm up. Some people, look, you may want to take it for a drive, get it warmed up, it'll be warm in two minutes. Uh, but to be truthful, just let it be. It's a K-series, and a K-series will warm up very, very quickly indeed. They just do. Anyway, in the meantime, I've got some business to attend to. We all know where this is going in the bin of shame 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 listen to that it's just purring like a kitten I've got to say, when I'm looking at the engine from this angle, you can see how clean it looks. I think it looks worse on the front. I don't know why, but it's, the light reflects really nicely off the side. And, and this is achievable, by the way, guys. I mean, I took a lot off this car, but this is so achievable, it's untrue. You just take a component off and you clean it. And then you clean the other components that you can't take off. Bit of wet sanding here and there. 
especially on the pipes. We're gonna be looking at the aircon soon. I think, hold on. Right, that's the hot. We don't touch that side. That's the side that you touch when it comes to air conditioning. Oh, yes. We've had some expansion. Now, what I'm gonna do is put the new cap on. New cap. Straight on. This is what happens when you don't have an expansion cap. <sighs> that would only take a few minutes and that would have flooded out. Now the cap will stop that from happening. Right, now, that coolant level has not dropped. Now this is the thing. The thermostat has actually opened because this hose, ah, that is boiling. That is a really, really warm hose. Now that hose would not be boiling if the thermostat had not opened. This bottom hose, wow. That bottom hose is positively cool to touch. That is quite interesting. I think the rad flush has done something absolutely drastic to the radiator. Because I tell you something, the difference between that and that is ridiculous. Wow, that is, that is quite amazing. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because the level hasn't dropped, and this can happen sometimes, you just go back inside the car. Now the temperature gauge has gone up slightly because we're not moving. If you can see that, the temperature gauge has just gone up. But if I put my foot on the gas, and I will show you this now. That is precisely what you want. There you go. That is precisely what you want. Now, that has now gone back to the way it should be. Now, the coolant warning level has gone up, so I know that's all functioning. Now, what we can do is put some heat on. Oh my goodness me, I can feel that already. Now, I, arguably, I could have done this while warming the car. You don't necessarily have to because a lot of cars have permanently hot heaters. Basically, the heater in a K-series, like a lot of cars, it's permanently on the hot circuit joined to the engine. It's got a bypass through the thermostat. So basically, it's always going to be warm. So you don't have to wait for the thermostat to open before you get hot air to your heater. A lot of older cars do that sort of thing. But yeah, that is nice and hot. That is exactly what you want. So I'm gonna turn this off and I'm just gonna turn the engine off now. So as we can see, the level has dropped a little bit, only a little bit. So that would have possibly been uh, potentially when the thermostat has just about opened. I suspect the thermostat may have only just opened. That is sometimes the case, but the level has somewhat dropped from when we actually got into the car uh, a couple of minutes ago. So it does work and it's still slightly above the max, which is exactly what you want. And it is just, just the right color. That is exactly what you want to see in a car. Now, that cap works as far as I'm aware. It's kept the pressure at a certain level. If I hadn't put that cap on when I did, after about four or five minutes, that would have spilled out. That's what you get from a cap that cannot hold the pressure anymore. So I'm gonna keep the old one as a spare, naturally. I'm probably gonna put it in the boot because oh, I've got no reason not to trust this one, but I just think it's such an important item. Just put it in the boot. I, I always carry a few spares in the boot. Um, the old coil packs, um, I've still got them as a spare. That's, you know, just for argument's sake, just to get you home if you ever had a problem. Because generally parts are most reliable somewhere between new and old. Um, so I've had a lot of brand new stuff on this and there could be some potential issues if I don't keep on touch with them. But anyway, now what you want to do now is wait for it to cool. Because, I mean, I'm going to touch it again that's hot that's warm 
it's just about warm but that's it that is really it um it's warm ish but the thermostat has opened the difference between that and that is way more than i thought that was positively cool um just before the thermostat opened obviously because there wouldn't have been as much flow but that is actually the difference between that and that is really significant and that means that your radiator is good that is exactly what you want to feel you want to feel a significant difference between the the hose that goes in and the hose that comes out generally it's the top one that's the hot one and the bottom one is the cold one some engines it's the opposite way around anyway i thought i'd share that now I'm going to leave this episode here because, for once, what I'm going to do in a few minutes is just take that out again. When it's just cooled down, give it 10, 15 minutes, and then I'll take that out again and see if it will drop. It will possibly drop a tiny bit. And then put it back on, tighten it, and I'm going to leave this overnight. And the next morning, it would have dropped a bit. I guarantee it would have dropped a bit. So you top it up to the max. And that's as simple as it gets. That is how to basically take, uh, well, that is basically how to install new coolant into a K-series and doing it properly. Um, Again, I I say again, the technique of holding the tank up while you're filling, that is a good, that's a good uh, thing to do if you're concerned about air bubbles. And as proven by me today with my gargling OAT coolant technique for uh, filling. Um, yeah, it's um, it can get a bit funny sometimes. But anyway, I'm going to leave this here. The ECU has just stopped making a buzzing sound. I will see you very, very soon. Like and subscribe. Please, if you know anyone who is into rovers, please tell them about this channel because, you know, at the end of the day, my rover videos are very niche. They are very small. I have only got a small number of people that watch these, but I really don't want to dull down my videos and become less enthusiastic because I know that I'm not going to get many people viewing them. It is a a massive contrast to my Mark 1 videos, and it needs to be said because YouTubing is not easy. It is based on statistics. It is based on likes and subs because that is the bread and butter of being a, a, a YouTuber. It is everything we do. We don't, honestly, we don't do this for free. There is always something in it for us. And nobody does anything in this world for nothing. So I have to have a little bit, have a bit of a kickback. I am nowhere near getting monetization. Uh, and I'm not under the illusion that it's going to be lucrative. It's certainly not going to be. Uh, it's going to be pennies. So nothing's going to change there. But the support and the subs they really do help to basically encourage me to make more videos uh the more subs the more likes the more videos the less of it i have to be kind of conscious about making less stuff and getting a kind of a balance between my uh my social life my youtube life and just enjoying cars off the camera and i'm afraid there is an element to that it is for my uh benefit completely anyway Enough rambling. Take care, guys.